Good evening and welcome to a very special video today, which is World Sight Day. And we bring you a different perspective on blindness and visual impairment. Our guest here today is Ms. Preeti Monga. She is founder and CEO of Silver Linings Trust and Silver Linings Services. Blind since childhood, she is an inspirational woman who has been working towards education and empowerment of the blind, inclusion of disabled and prevention of blindness and has directly and indirectly impacted millions of people since 1987. She promotes inclusion of employment of disabled and holds motivational trainings, facilitates cornea donations and does trauma counseling. Her NGO is running uh, the Shiksha Preparatory School, which educates blind girls under the integrated system also runs a hostel for blind girls and women, along with providing them with all required developmental training so that they can become productive and contributing citizens. She received the National Award for Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities from the President of India in 2013. Preeti ji, welcome to Organ India, and it's wonderful to finally be able to speak with you. Sanana ji, thank you so, so very much for having me here. And uh, it's absolutely my honor, my pleasure. I'm humbled to uh, be here. And I hope that um, my being here is going to make a little bit of difference I'm in the way <laughs> on the very special occasion of World Sight Day. Wonderful. So uh, congratulations on your national award and everything that you have achieved in the past few decades. It's truly inspiring. Uh, so I just wanted to begin by asking you, what is the significance of World Sight Day? Uh, see, I think it holds a very, very deep significance because uh, sight is so common for a human being. Eyesight is just you open your eyes and I think a, a large percent of, of human beings uh just see and just carry on with their life, right? right. They never realize. Yeah. yeah. So they never realize that they're just opening their eyes and when they're seeing, um, the world probably comes into their grasp, into their, uh, you know, they're, they're in command and uh, they don't realize what a what an important gift is, eyesight. And what they have is so precious but it's so easy for them to access it. They don't count it as precious. I mean, we all take it as, you know. Uh, it's just, okay, it's a run of the mill. Okay. I mean, you don't even think about, um, uh, you know, being able to see. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So that is that is very interesting when 80% of your, uh, you know, a person's uh, knowledge and uh, functioning um, is actually based upon your eyesight and yet we never give it a uh, you know a, even a, a 0. 0.0001% thought exactly <laughs> so it's a very very important day um world sight day is a very very important day uh, and it should be celebrated it should be observed in a very uh, much much more on a much more uh, bigger scale uh, because i think uh, not only uh, the loss of it, but I think caring for your sight is another very big aspect. And being thankful, grateful that you can see, a person can see is uh, tremendous. It only is realized the day uh, the lights go out in your home or <laughs> or there is uh, blurring on your windscreen or, uh, you know, while you're driving or something uh, uh, that little simple or somebody who's lost eyesight to a, any degree. That's the time when, you know, you really wonder, oh, why I can't see? What's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, World Sight Day is very, very um, significantly important and we should all be celebrating it. Yes, I agree totally. I mean, we take things for granted. I, 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 it, no, this didn't even occur to me, you know, that yes, uh, I've taken it for granted. <laughs> That's the fun of it. Yeah, yeah. And why am I not celebrating it? Huh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Silver Lining Trust, how did it come about? I mean, you've been, you've written, I've read some of your blogs. Yeah, yeah. You've been educating as a child. You've been educating, training, and empowering uh, blind girls, boys, women. Yeah. What motivated you to do that? 
Uh, well, uh, the simple fact that, uh, as I mentioned uh, in my earlier comment, that, um, you know, 80% of the uh, knowledge that a human being possesses or the functioning of a human being is um, uh, had, uh, you know, it goes through the window of eyesight, right? And um, it's a world made by sighted people for sighted people. And the people who have who don't have the gift of eyesight or who've lost their sight due to any reason have never been thought about. And um, what happens is when you don't have the gift of eyesight, it may be due to any reason or any point in time. Uh, it is very strange. <clears throat> we, uh, as you know, I'm totally blind myself since childhood. And, um, uh, we miss out that 80% chance of acquiring the knowledge the way it is presented to us in the world. Right. We are completely oblivious and we completely lost. We just don't know what the world is all about, how, what happens, uh, how the world goes around, what, uh, how to aspire because we don't see anything. We don't aspire. Uh, a lot of things are not available to people without sight are not available to them. And hence, even if they do get some kind of an education through a school, special school or school for blind, um, you know, mm -hmm. it's not a 360 degree education. It's just a, a, a book, bookish education. Suppose I talk about uh, Mount Everest, you know. So a child who is being taught about Mount Everest will also have a pictorial view of it and today's world and time i mean um there is so much uh out there which is visual which mm -hmm. comes onto your hand you know onto your handphone or your mm -hmm. your computer ta uh, desk or pictures photographs films but even a simple thing like mount everest doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. to a person who has never seen it a multi-story building doesn't make sense to anyone what is a multi-story building what is an office like? What is a corporate office like? How do people sit? How do people stand? How are you supposed to dress? Um, these are just a uh, tip of the iceberg. I mean, I'm just trying to because we don't have that much time. But anything that is around us is just words. Right. And hence, I decided <clears throat> because I had suffered this and I was a very lucky, uh, fortunate person a child that my parents had a tremendous amount of uh, common sense although they were very traumatized when they discovered they had a blind daughter mm -hmm. uh, but they had an, a wonderful uh, common sense that they were not trained to bring up a blind child but my mother as well as my father would close their eyes and do a function and then teach me how to do it using my other senses and hence I got where I am today, right? And they would supplement and same went with my younger brother when this he saw that my parents were describing everything. So he automatically fell uh, fell into that pattern. And he also while playing or fighting or <laughs> whatever brother <clears throat> brother, sister, siblings do, um, he always um, instructed or directed his uh, actions towards um uh, my other senses as well. So I was always included. So when I had this gift and I, uh, you know, uh, grew up in that way, I realized as I grew up, I realized that uh, when I went to a school for the blind accidentally, incidentally, mm -hmm. I realized that this is not <laughs> taught to anyone. This this part is completely missing. Okay, there's, uh, you know, you can get certificates, you get uh, degrees if you get good numbers, but it does not make any visual sense or <clears throat> to a blind person. Mm. And, and especially the girls are even more marginalized because as it is, women are, mar you know, are on the margins, no matter how much we talk about it. Uh, and can you imagine being a blind girl and a blind woman? So I decided uh, in 1987 that uh, although I would I was working for the all the genders, but my focus needed to be on girls and women. 
and because i was a girl and woman i had the um the knowledge of being able to explain to them help them understand their world better mm-hmm. and social skills all all the other rest of uh, uh, you know rest of the things so that they discover sorry about that so they discover that's my speech device <laughs> wanting to also uh, help me talk <laughs> mm-hmm. so um that's why i chose to be uh working in this field and then when i jumped into the whole thing i realized that there is tremendous work that needs to be done a lone person a girl who has practically no money uh no one to help her and totally blind if she has to take on such a task alone it's it's just unthinkable and then uh, in 20, in uh, 2006 I continued to work alone though because mm-hmm. uh, that time I was struggling myself but I continued to work in this field and helping anyone and everyone through media through uh, my training programs through working as a volunteer uh, basically <clears throat> through groups of uh, people women and then in 2006 I ha- I launched my NGO a trust which I called Silver Linings uh that's how silver linings came about as a trust but my work started in 1987 and um the silver linings i realized as i went along is not only something that would help people or women or uh you know persons who are not able to see or children who are not able to see silver linings is supposed to help every human being <laughs> because we are all challenged right so that's how uh this whole thing came about really amazing um i also read that you had some problems in with yourself in in schools uh yes, you know being told that you dare to dream you know absolutely about, absolutely being educated about getting married uh <laughs> and then you went out to, on to become a single mother absolutely you got back on your own terms <laughs> it's a long it's long story <laughs> yes Yeah, absolutely absolutely challenges have uh, come my way in um, i think uh, in bunches and um, they it, they just cascaded on me all the time you know i just get out of one and the next one would be there and then not no one many would be there starting from as you said being thrown out of school just because i was blind right. and uh, the rest of it and uh, i should not live on my own terms but i must be de- dependent on someone and because i didn't have an education i must um you know adhere to everybody else's <laughs> norms so challenges have continued and of course my blindness uh, has been a very uh, major challenge when you can't see then things become magnified you know the challenges but i still feel that you know we every human being has challenges and uh, hence i freely share um i you know that's why i wrote my autobiographies there are two of them which are published and um, also i started writing a blog whenever i get that little bit of time i do that and uh, i never say no to an interview or uh, uh, a media so that somewhere people do realize that if i can make it then so can they right right <laughs> you get all this uh, you know at the times when you felt like totally that all these troubles are upon you where did you find that motivation what what made you just you know mm-hmm. stay so positive um you know and and committed well um that's a very interesting question which i have to answer uh, a lot mm-hmm. uh because yes when you are down and uh, out you know uh it is it is very very tough to uh, look at the positive side of life it's very very tough but since a child since i got my disability my father is the person who always uh, with his uh, knowledge of the script scriptures um the guru granth sahib uh, and other other he was a very well read man and uh, he always told me uh, he said you have to make yourself strong you have to uh, with a with a share <coughs> he's to always motivate me even mm-hmm. when i was a little girl khud hi ko kar buland itna ke har tadbir se pehle khuda bande se khud puche bata teri raza kya hai so that got into me mm-hmm. that i have to build myself up and only then 
will I be able to live a dignified life and on my own terms so that I can contribute. I wanted to become a contributor. I wanted to do, I wanted to give more than get, you know, because I knew if I give, all this was taught to me through all these, um, you know, the wisdom of my elders and uh, the wisdom of this. I'm very, very interested in uh, reading and uh, soaking up the wisdom around me. So that is something that told me that I need to give more than I need to take. Because when I give, what I get is tremendous. It's priceless. And that is something that uh, always got me out of all the challenges that, um, you know, got me that motivation to get out of the challenges. Either I succumb. If I wanted to live, I wanted to live a dignified life and uh, a person who could freely explore. And uh, that's what pulled me out, you know, that I, I did not want to be a poor thing and just be on one side. I, I had a choice, but I couldn't choose that somehow. And I wanted my children also then later on to be not to be ashamed of me. At least they should be. Uh, if I can't do much for them, at least I could teach them that you need to stand up on your own feet. And uh, thankfully, I have been successful there as well. <laughs> Wonderful. You know, I, I read something interesting in one of your blogs that part of the challenge of inclusion of the blind, apart from, you know, like the institutional challenges like yeah. lack of facilities, yeah. education, jobs, etc., is that people feel awkward when they meet someone, who's, yeah. you know, in terms of what to say, what not to say, what to do, what could be considered harmful, you know, hurtful, yeah. offensive and how to yeah. overcome yeah. that awkwardness. And yeah. I think that's like true to a, a very, very large extent. And that's why interaction is, you know, a minimum. Like I, I, we don't really see uh, people interacting that much, mm. and I think uh, our viewers would appreciate what you have to say about that, and you know, or how all of us as individuals True. can learn how to interact openly and freely. Yeah, with someone who's visually impaired, or you know, even hearing impaired, or anybody uh, like that. Sure, sure. So oh, it's a chicken and egg story. Mm. You know, what comes first? Uh, and it's it's these inhibitions are within us, all of us. Uh, so I always feel I always feel that there needs to be inclusive education right from day one. Uh, the families also you will notice when a child they have a blind child in the, in the family, this blind child is ex given extra care, over protection, or on the other hand, neglect. Mm -hmm complete neglect mm -hmm. so this this child is completely out of the system out of the inclusion even in his her own family right because there is no awareness uh let me give you a very simple metaphor that people could understand uh simply that if you have to close your eyes or live without electricity for one night and have to do everything from bathing to eating to working to uh, settling your things, finding your stuff. You won't last more than five minutes because a, a human being, a sighted person is so much dependent on sight, eyesight, hmm. that they feel that somebody who cannot see has to be alien or has to be super a human or <laughs> or is such a mystery. How do we get along? Till even now, I get questions like, "How do you? How can you manage to cook? <gasps> you cook? Oh God! How do you manage to dress? How do you manage to choose your clothes? I mean, it's 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 not their fault. It's the lack of interaction, lack of being together throughout. If the children, parents are educated, if the world is educated that it's okay if someone can't walk you just help that person along take him along take her along the wheelchair is there just push it around okay or not, just just be there just ignore uh, the wheelchair if the person is blind just you can link your ha arm through hers and you can also play a running game or do anything so this will open only happen because children are not uh, yet um, tuned in and uh, tutored 
these are the different people hmm. you have to be careful with them uh, you know children fight children do they normal naturally they grow up and then they will find no difficulty in interacting with any kind of a person with a disability or any kind of a human being what we need to figure out is what we need to fix in our minds is that we are all human beings it's not that a person with a disability or especially a blind person is great or um, really bad or you know those are the two parameters you're put on hmm. we are just we are we belong <laughs> blindness can happen in any home anywhere at any time we are just a part of the human society and we are also so different from each other just like anyone else so this only can happen if we are completely included right from day one and not put away into uh, special schools and uh, treated separately and uh, i think that's what i promote that blind people can be uh, lazy can be uh, you know not wanting to do things can be of any kind uh, you know and also can excel and just be average or just be good you know so we need to understand that don't look at a wheelchair don't look at uh, impairment just look at the human being and just relax even even if you're offensive at least that button person will shout at you that hey i don't want to be talked to so that's okay that even mm-hmm. even people uh, who are sighted not everybody gets along with everybody right yeah so it's it just needs to yeah. be normal yeah. uh, you know yeah. just mm. just more interaction more inclusion and that's why i'm fighting for inclusion all the time and do you feel that it's there at all in companies offices schools colleges are we uh, are we heading to that you know in that direction or not at all no no we um, see we there are laws in place there are uh, uh um, there are intentions are there right uh companies schools everywhere the laws are in place but uh, let me tell you th- this has two two sides to look at it one thing is that um we in india are so heavily populated we all feel as as any human being would feel in such a heavily populated country that the jobs are less even people who don't have any disabilities highly qualified people are jobless today right so there is not enough first of all uh, i don't believe in that that there is more than enough to go by so that also uh, promotes that we should put people into classes into uh, communities and say no this is not for you for you if we take a blind child into the class then uh, we have to have a special something and which we don't have so we don't want to take the child so i think the division is more from the feeling of lack it erupts from there okay how can we marginalize and push people uh, on the margin so that there's more for the uh you know for the for the masses right that is one thing and the other thing is lack of understanding lack of uh, um awareness that it's okay to be together you know that's what social systems are so i feel that <coughs> we are trying to go there but we are not succeeding very much um, very very little success is there and uh, i think we all just need to just uh, take away are focus from everything else and say capability ability is something that we have to focus in whether it is in a person without disability or somebody with a disability or without blindness or with blindness i think we need to just give reasonable quality opportunity to everybody according to her and his uh, social system what other children are doing in the family or what other children are doing in their town city village uh, the children with disabilities should also be there only within them if they included there and the other thing is i think we need to be uh, looking at abilities once you give a reasonable opportunity that opportunity is available to someone mm-hmm. maybe a blind person then that blind person or child is has a chance to come up to prove whether going to be a productive person or just somebody who is on the wayside and you know looking for um, the easy way in life which most human beings look out for 
forget blind people or anyone. Everybody likes an easy way out. Yeah. So it's just as simple as that. So you've written two autobiographies, The Other Senses and yeah. Flight Without Sight. Yeah, Flight Without Sight. Yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, so um, I always felt, see, I'm a very ordinary uh, uh, human being. Uh, struggling i've been struggling through my life and um i had children i had uh, you know uh, family my cousins and people so i used to think that you know maybe um my story would be forgotten and uh, not be um you know how would my children know because they, when they were small you know they would miss out on a lot so i focused on that and i started to write write uh, my life story you know from where back I could remember and I had access to a computer at, at that time and uh, I started to write my life story and then a friend of mine uh, Susan Vishwanathan she's a acclaimed writer and a professor she was a professor she's just retired at JNU so we used to travel by chartered bus so she said why don't you your writing so I told her so she said why don't you send it to a publisher send it to Roly Books just find the uh, I'll send you the email ID and I did and I forgot about it and there's they said that, yes, ma'am, please complete the book and we want to publish it. And I was so zapped. Mm -hmm. Then I was serious about it. And then I realized that my life story, my life's learnings are not only important for the people with vision impairment. I think those learnings and those books are a huge motivation um, uh, you know, for anybody that would like to read them. That's what I felt. And then... Uh, so my the other senses uh, was something I want you know it just struck me that everything I'm doing everything but without the use of sight mm -hmm. and I should call it the other senses because we have five senses four of them are working perfectly so I mean they could be better than just one and a half which normally people use so I called it the other senses and then a lot of feedback came back to me that. Um, you know, Preeti, you haven't really written uh, the horrendous challenges uh, that you have faced in a in a very uh, straightforward way. And you, I think you need to write more. So then I wrote the next book, which was Flight Without Sight. And uh, although they are quite similar, Flight Without Sight is a very um, concise book. And uh, my dream was to be published by Hay House. And uh, that's what happened. <laughs> And they did a wonderful job helping me edit it. And um, I think that book came out in 2018. So it's all out there. Wonderful. Um, any short message you'd like to share with our viewers? Yes, I think that, okay, all right. If people have become uh, visually impaired, it's it's okay but there are in our country so many so many so many people who are blind unnecessarily blind i think we need to work towards helping such people to gain their eyesight back that is one thing although there is a lot of work happening but still people should come forward and donate corneas people should come forward and in fact donate Everything that they have, I mean, what do we have? This is all going to remain here behind us. So I think that is a, a message that I want to give. And if ever anyone finds a child, a person with vision impairment, feel free to connect with me. At least I can guide that person, guide the family, what steps to take and help the family understand that you've only lost, the child has only lost sight, nothing else. Mm -hmm. So let's timely bring that child to any institution around their home, anywhere, so that the child gets some rehabilitation and is off into the world as soon as possible. Thank you so much, Preeti Ji, for joining us. And I really look forward to reading both your books. <laughs> Hope that the viewers Thank you. do too. My deepest respect for your work and I wish you the best for the future. I hope that everyone watching here has been inspired not only to pledge their corneas for donation, but also to have an inclusive approach to persons with visual impairment or any kind of. Any impairment. kind of. Yeah, sure. And if I... you 
uh, if yeah. you, anybody would like to reach out to you, uh, they can do so at your email ID. If that yes, is certainly. Yeah. Certainly, yeah. my email ID is there. And uh, you need to just Google my name, P-R-W-E-T-I space M-O-N-G-A. And I'm very, very accessible. Yeah, you can also look her up on uh, uh, www.silver-linings.org. Linings yes, Thank certainly. Thank you so much, Preeti Ji. It's really fantastic talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> A pleasure.